My uh, channel is called Ancient Biker. Um, some of my guests on this channel will be, like myself, keen motorcyclists. Some of them actually have no connection at all to motorcycling. So it's really a sort of hook to hang the channel on to use the motorbiking hobby or interest or passion or whatever you want to call it. Uh, it applies to some of my guests, as I say, but not to all of them. Some of them, some of them have got no connection at all to biking. Some of them, on the other hand, are very, very keen bikers, and they'll be out on their bikes several days a week. And of course, the other big advantage being in this part of the world is that we have, I think it's true to say, we have 12 months, a 12-month season of biking. It's not like Europe, for example, where where the seasons, you know, uh, winter in particular, of course, make it practically impossible to go biking. Here we, we have a rainy season, which lasts several months. But in fact, um, during the rainy season, the rain can be very hard. It can be torrential, monsoon type rain, but it tends to be only for an hour or so every day. And uh, um, in fact, the uh, rain tends to come at the same time every day. Often up here in the north, the rain comes at a late afternoon, around about half past five, six o'clock. So that means that even during the rainy season, it's normally possible to go out on the motorbike and not worry too much about uh, wet roads, which can, of course can be dangerous. So this is very much a sort of 12 month motorcycling season up here. The other thing of course, is that even if if you do get caught in a and a shower of rain, because it's very warm up here in, in Thailand. Um, it means that if you get wet, if you're not wearing waterproof clothes and so on, uh, you tend to dry off very, very quickly in the very warm breeze. For most of the year, the temperatures are above 30 degrees centigrade. Now in January, uh, we have what they call here the, the, the Northern Thai winter which basically means that temperatures are no longer around about 35 to 35 degrees. They are probably nearer to 25 degrees, which is still in lots of the world uh, would be considered very warm. So even here in the winter, uh, it's, it's very warm most of the time. And the other big difference, it, it gets a little bit cooler, it goes down to about 25 degrees in the day. Um, but uh, normally during this so-called winter period, which lasts from the end of November until about the end of February for about a three month period, um, it tends to be almost completely rain free, very few clouds and very little rain. So this time of the year, of course, in particular is, is an ideal time to go out on the bike because it's uh, a little bit cooler and uh, normally um, Normally, there's no risk of rain. Uh, there are very few clouds and very little rain for about a three-month period. So this is, the, this is probably the high season. And it's the time of year when the most tourists will come to Thailand and also up here to the north. Although, I should say, up here in Chiang Rai, um, there are very few tourists. There are quite a few foreigners, like myself, living here, the so-called Farang, as the Thais call us. Um, foreign people living here full time. Most of them are retired. And, um, but compared with a lot of other cities and parts of Thailand, Bangkok, Chiang Mai, Phuket, Pattaya, and other parts of Thailand, there are relatively few expats living here. And also relatively few tourists coming here because the sort of tourists who come to Chiang Rai uh, probably not typical in the sense they're not coming here for the beaches because the beaches are about a thousand kilometers from here. Um, so it's not a, they're not beach holiday makers who come up to Chiang, Chiang Rai or Chiang Mai. They possibly more interested in a different take on Thailand, on seeing different types of cities, maybe more authentic cities with less tourism and less tourists. Or of course, they're, you know, traditional travelers who may or may not be backpackers, may or may not have a rucksack on their back, um, but they're possibly up here in order to explore the countryside here in the Golden Triangle, or maybe to go across into Laos, to go to Lang Prabang, which I've heard is a very beautiful little city in Laos on the Mekong River. 
Um, I haven't been there myself yet, but I'm planning to go. So those are the sort of tourists we get up here in Chiang Rai. Chiang Rai, therefore, is a, quite a quiet city, small city, quiet city, um, and not a typical, what I would call a typical tourist destination for foreigners coming to Thailand. My decision to come and move to Thailand was a little bit spontaneous. I came here immediately after COVID, immediately when it became first became possible to travel at the end of COVID. So that was the end of, nine, of 2021 uh, when, I, when I came to Thailand. And at the time, I, I had been living in Prague, the Czech Republic. And like a lot of people, I suppose I... Um, you know, I had itchy feet, I wanted to travel again. It hadn't been possible really to travel for maybe almost two years because of COVID, because of the lockdowns and the fact we weren't allowed out, not even of our own, of our own homes for a while and, and certainly not allowed to, to travel across Europe because, you know, so many countries were locked down. And I took practically the first opportunity to, to, to leave Europe and and uh, come to Southeast Asia. I think Thailand was the very first country to open its borders after COVID. And when I came here, I wasn't really thinking about staying here. But I think uh, Thailand had that effect on me that it has on many people who come here, um, that they immediately think, oh, this is not only a nice place to, to visit, but it might be a very nice place to live. So uh, I came up to Chiang Mai at the end of 2021 in November, in that in that so-called winter of, of northern Thailand. I came up from Phuket, which at the time was ra where it was raining a lot and was also very humid. And when I came up to Chiang Mai, I immediately noticed how much, for me, how much nicer the climate up here is than down in Phuket. Um, far less humid, cooler and completely dry, no clouds. In fact, I don't think it rained for three months that year when I came to Chiang Mai. So I lived for a year in Chiang Mai. I, as I say, hadn't planned to stay and live there, but very soon thought, okay, this is a nice place to relocate to from Prague, which is what I did. So I moved to Chiang Mai for a year, and then after living in Chiang Mai for a year, which is a city about 180 kilometers to the south, west of Chiang Rai, not quite as far north, but it's the second biggest city in Thailand. It's a very popular destination. Uh, so there are far more tourists. It's a much bigger city and there's far more traffic in Chiang Mai than in Chiang Rai. Um, but I lived in Chiang Mai for a year. It's a very nice city. And then at the end of that year, I decided to try Chiang Rai. So I've now been here for a little bit more than a year. And I live in a very nice little house, which is in the middle of the rice fields, in the middle of the rice paddies, on the outskirts of the city, but still only about five or six minutes on my motorbike into the center of the, uh, of the city to go to the central shopping plaza, for example, where I can you can do all the shopping you need to do, really. Um, so it's very convenient. It's on the outskirts of the city, it's very easy to get from here down towards Chiang Mai or up into the Golden Triangle, up into those wonderful, onto those wonderful uh, or country roads. Um, or it's also, like I say, very convenient for getting into the center of the city and and and, and uh, taking advantage of the of the shops and so on in the in the city. So I moved to Thailand just over two years ago. And I've only been motorcycling for just over two years as well. I only got my motorbike license when I was in Prague. I did lessons there um, and uh, got my motorcycle license only just a few weeks, a couple of weeks before I left Prague in November of 2021. Um, but as I said before, this is a great country uh, for motorcycling and it's the, it's the most popular mode of transport. So there are millions of motorbikes in this country. The average Thai has a, a bike of some sort, it tends to be a very small, uh, a very small bike of 90cc or 125cc. 
Um, and uh, so I, I had this wonderful opportunity after arriving to to um, to get on my own bike, to buy a bike and, and to use it and to get out on the roads. Um, and I have been thinking, I thought actually back when I was taking my test in Prague, I thought uh, what I'd really like to do is to get myself probably a bigger bike, not a huge bike, but a bigger bike, and actually ride that bike from Europe, somewhere in Europe, maybe from Prague, maybe from the Czech Republic, or maybe from further north in Europe, ride down through Europe, down into Turkey, down through Iran, through Pakistan, through India, through Myanmar, and uh, take the bike from Europe to Southeast Asia. I wouldn't be the first person to do that, but that's a, a trip that I really enjoy uh, taking. And if I do that, if I ever get to do that uh, trip, I would like to do it uh, with my own YouTube channel and obviously film my, my journey. And that is, the, that is actually the, the so-called backstory to how I came to start this channel of mine, because I may or may not, we'll wait and see if this, if this big journey ever happens. But uh, if I'm successful in starting and building this channel, then one of the things, is, as I say, that I'd like to do is to take that long trip from Europe to here, to Thailand, uh, on a motorbike, and um, I'd like to have a, you know, an established channel with, you know, uh, with, with a, maybe preferably a few thousand subscribers to my channel before I start that journey. So I thought, okay, um, let's start this channel before I do the trip. And as I say, I don't know at the moment whether I will ever do it and when I would do it. It's almost certainly not going to be this year. I think it's most likely to be next year at the earliest, if I ever do this long trip from Europe to Southeast Asia. Um, but um, I'd like to get the channel up and running, to build a subscriber base and a certain following uh, before I, I take this long journey from, from Europe to here. And then I thought about, well, what's the content going to be like? It's not going to be me taking a long journey across the world, across continents, across Europe and Asia. But there are a lot of interesting people here in Thailand, um, interesting local ties and also interesting uh, other interesting foreigners who are living here, for example, in, in Thailand. I know some of them and it occurred to me that um, it would be interesting for other people not living in Thailand to to hear about those people and how, you know, their experiences, their lives, um, how they came to be living in Thailand. Uh, what is it they appreciate about being here? Maybe some of the problems of being here as well, but certainly some of the advantages of living in Thailand. What life is like for them and so on, you know, their own experiences, which will be different from my own. They have a different background, they come from different countries uh, and so on. So uh, that's the format really for my for my new channel it's going to be conversations i call it abc ancient biker conversations abc with interesting people that's going to be the content of most of my most of the videos which i upload on this channel and um you know they're very i hope they're very relaxed conversations most of them are relatively long by youtube standards they're going to be most of them at least 30 minutes in length. People say, oh, it's much too long. You know, people, uh, most YouTube viewers will turn off after five or 10 minutes. Well, that might happen. I know it's a possibility, of course. But I'm hoping that, um, and trying to find, hoping that my guests are going to be interesting enough to, uh, to keep people watching, you know, maintain their interest. And uh, as I say, some of them will be 30 minutes or longer. Um, most of them are pretty standard sort of interview formats, you know, sitting in a, like here, sitting very, very quietly uh, and uh, without moving around too much in front of the camera and, um, you know, talking about life experiences and so on. Uh, some of them will be a little bit more than that because, you know, um, some of the people I talk to 
have interesting businesses, for example, you know, running bars or restaurants or other businesses here in Thailand or have an interesting home set up. And I will then in that case take uh, some video film of their, you know, how, how, how they're and where they're living, you know, so that won't only be just uh, static uh, talking heads, people sitting in front of the camera and talking. There'll be some videos which, which are a bit more bit more lively than that. But I think the average, you know, most of the most of the content will be conversations of people sitting, sitting like I am now in front of the camera. I did a conversation with my friend Ikram a couple of weeks ago now. And uh, so this video that I'm doing here today, I'm going to use a combination of this footage now that I'm that I'm making when I'm talking with the conversation I had with Ikram. So um, we're going to cut those two videos together. And as I say, it's just an opportunity for me to say a little bit about, you know, um, how I came to be here, what I'm planning to do with this channel. And um, that's what I'm uh, that, that, that's what I'm doing with this. And this will be the first of, I hope, very many videos which I will produce, uh, have edited and upload on YouTube. I hope this will be only the very first of, of many of many videos. In the first month, I'm hoping to upload about 15 videos. So about every 48 hours, I'm planning to uh, upload or go live with um, an uploaded vi uh, video of mine, um, which have all been filmed in and around Chiang Rai, Chiang Rai, Chiang Mai in the north of Thailand. Um, and that's my plan for the first month. And I'm thinking after this first month or so, four or five weeks of, of, of the channel, depending on how well the channel does, I'm thinking then there will be a possibility to maybe diversify the format a little bit and develop, um, develop the channel in different directions. That'll depend a little bit on the feedback I get. So and one thing I'm obviously hoping is that some of my viewers and some of my new subscribers will post hopefully constructive comments, friendly comments in the comment section below the video, maybe with some suggestions about what I could do, apart from the sort of one-to-one -one in interview conversation format. So I'd obviously appreciate any of those suggestions. So I might, uh, you know, if I get some interesting suggestions, might diversify the channel in the future. But as I say, starting as we are with these conversations, and uh, I hope uh, you enjoy them. I hope you enjoy watching this little introduction to myself. And I hope that you enjoy and stay with the other videos I post, not just in the first month now that I'm, that I'm going live on YouTube, but also I hope for the future. And in that case, I would obviously ask you to please subscribe. It doesn't cost anything, but subscribe to my channel. Because of course, one thing I want to do is to get that minimum of a thousand subscribers as quickly as possible and people who want to watch these videos so that I get the also the minimum requirement of 4,000 watch hours collectively, 4,000 hours watched of my YouTube channel. And if and when I've done that, I will be so-called monetized on YouTube, which means for the, for the first time I would be able to earn a little bit of the advertising revenue that YouTube makes with its channels. And so that's obviously my objective, which is one reason why I decided from the beginning to try and produce these videos as well as possible. So I'm using professional cameras, I'm using professional sound equipment, I'm using professional lighting, and I'm using professional editors to cut these videos together. Um, so that, uh, you know, I'm hoping through the most important, of course, having the highest quality guests, the most interesting guests on the one hand, and also uh, producing the videos as professionally as possible for me. I'm hoping that through this combination um, that I would I will be able to generate a lot of interest and subscribers who will stay loyal to, to the channel.
So thank you very much for watching this. I hope that you um, enjoy this and the other videos I post. Please um, post your comments if you have any to make and please like my channel and please subscribe to it. I would very much appreciate that. And if you have friends, of course, who you think would also enjoy this sort of content, then please tell them as well about it and get them to watch and subscribe. Thanks very much. And uh, I hope you enjoy the channel. Bye-bye.